hello, and welcome to our new version of Let's Get Lit. So, we just finished the Odyssey, which was on podcast, and though that was a great adventure, I thought, you know what? Why not do a video? Because that's A, more interesting, and B, so much more entertaining. So that's what we're going to do. Now, just to let you guys know, in case you didn't watch the Odyssey series, I'm going to go chapter by chapter and tell you the who, what, when, where, and why of each book. We're going to be doing the classics of old, like the Iliad, the Odyssey, Dante's Inferno, and Frankenstein, Jane Eyre, things like that. Things that you probably have to read for class or have always wanted to read, but never sat down and actually read it. So, this is what we're going to do. This is our new adventure. And wait, guys, what's that sound? Guys, I think I know what that means. Wait, what's what's going on? I, I, uh... Whoa! What happened to... Guys, this can only mean one thing. We're about to start Frankenstein. Alright, so, just to let you guys know, before Frankenstein actually begins, there's a series of letters that are written to the author and that are written also to the audience. These first letters are from a man named Robert Walton. These letters, in the first one, basically he's writing to his sister Margaret. And in this letter, he's telling Margaret how he's preparing for his journey to the North Pole. How no one has been to the North Pole before and he wants to be the very first to discover it. So, that's the first one. In the second letter, which is on March 28th of the next year, he writes to his sister and he tells her that he has got a crew together that he's going to get to the North Pole. Also, he's made it to Archangel Russia, which is his next stop before sailing off. In this letter, he also talks about how he um, gets his crew, how his crew are very noblemen. He goes on to explain a lot of the details. So that's pretty much what the second letter is about. The third letter is a checkup. Uh, basically, he writes to his sister and he says that everything is going along smoothly. Uh, the winter is a little bit boring and a little bit lonely because he doesn't have anyone to share it with. And so he really wishes he could make a friend, but out on the open sea, you're not just going to find someone walking around. So he's a little bit sad and disheartened, but he still perseveres. And then he gets the news that though winter was really harsh, spring starts early. And that's pretty much the third letter. Now. The fourth and final letter, he's on his boat, he's writing to his sister, and he tells her of this really strange occurrence that's happened. Now, guys, he's on the middle of the ocean with no one around, going to the North Pole, where there should be absolutely zero life out there. However, one morning he wakes up and their boat is frozen in ice, completely frozen, and there's a really thick fog that's coming in. Now, he takes this a little bit sad because he wants to continue on. So he goes back down to his chamber and he pretty much rests for a few hours. That afternoon though, he goes back upstairs on the deck to see if the boat's clear of ice or not. Out in the distance, the fog is lifted and he sees this creature, or well, humanoid thing, riding the sled out across the ice. Which is really weird because, again, there shouldn't be anyone out there. Him and his men follow this being with their eyesight because their boat can't move, it's still stuck. And they watch as he goes across the ice. So he writes his sister and tells her of this really weird occurrence. And then in that same letter from the few days next, he writes and he tells her about how he went up the next morning to go see if the boat was ready to move. Well, when he went upstairs, all of his crewmen and the lieutenant and everybody else was off to one side of the ship and they were looking off the side of the ship to see what was going on. So they look over, and there's a man sitting on a sled right next to the ship. Now, it wasn't the man they saw earlier the previous day, or creature, I should say, because it looked like a human, but it was about eight foot tall, and it was very weirdly built, so they didn't think it was quite human yet. But the man who was on side of the boat, who was on his sled, asks where the people are going. Which is a really odd question to ask someone when you're in the North Pole. But Robert tells the stranger where he's going and what he's doing. And so the stranger agrees to come on board, and Robert takes care of him. 
Robert then feeds him, gets him warm, and Robert also helps bring him back to life because he looked really, really dead. And throughout the next few letters, which there's only about two or three left in the first section, uh, basically, Robert is writing his sister Margaret and telling her how this stranger is the most interesting man that he's ever met. But something's plaguing him, and Robert doesn't quite know what it is. So, long story short, the stranger tells Robert that his past is very sketchy, full of sorrow, full of depression, full of grief, full of everything, and that it's too troublesome to hear. But, after a few days, the stranger agrees to tell Robert all about his past, because he feels like it's a learning lesson that everyone should know. That way they don't repeat the same mistake that he does. And this, guys, is our introduction into Frankenstein. So, be sure to catch the next video, because that is where we will actually start getting into the story of Frankenstein.